Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Mike Garcia of Biodynamic Athletics for the BDA podcast. I'm excited today. I have my good friend Chris Bernal and Wyatt Matheson here representing the Banditos Baseball Club. And uh, good morning, guys. What's morning. happening, man? How are we doing? Doing great. Hey, man. Uh, it's good to see you, Chris. It's been a while. I know we caught up right now yeah. just a little bit, you know, and uh, just a quick history. Like, you know, we've known each other for a little while. The kids yeah. play a little ball together. So I think it's probably been like 10 years, I think, <laughs> since we right, like sat yeah. down even just for a five-minute conversation. Exactly. You know, I think we've passed each other and passing and uh why we got you here too man so you've just relocated now was, was that right yeah i moved here to i live in edinburgh now for about a year okay we moved down from corpus awesome man so i want to get we'll talk about the banditos and you know what you guys are doing down here south tech is really exciting i know i've seen a couple of the things you guys have been doing with the teams and with the you know the organization has a 30-year tradition right based out of houston and they're expanding now to south texas which is going to create a lot of opportunities i think for youth baseball here, right, for sure. Uh, I know, Chris, you have a lot of experience in this, man. You've been doing this for a long time in Corpus with your own uh, organization uh, with tournaments and youth baseball. And what, you know, I think uh, you, I want to put it out here that you're a professional baseball player. We're yeah. a professional baseball player, right? So yeah. you were uh, drafted in 2020 with the Diamondbacks, right? Uh, draft, I was, dra I made my debut in 2020. Okay. With I got drafted into professional baseball in 2012 by okay. the Pirates. Oh, there second you go. Round. Yeah. Nice. So I've been doing it for, <clears throat> 10 years give or take so so let's talk about that real quick right let's just talk let's talk about that um you know so i'm gonna just ask like the what everyone always wants to ask mm -hmm. when they see a professional athlete right so what was the dream man when when did you know when did you decide man i'm uh, gonna play baseball probably honestly it was pretty early like probably six or seven like i knew i wanted to be like like, I mean, obviously when you're a kid, kid, like you're like, oh, it's a dream. Like, I want to be a major league baseball player. Yeah. Obviously, most of the time it's sort of like, like, oh, okay, Jimmy, like that's not going to happen, <laughs> but we can play baseball. Like, it's fine. So, I mean, six or seven is like when the, like the little, little kid dream, like mm -hmm. came in probably when I was like 13 or 14, I realized that like it was serious. Like right. I could like maybe, maybe 11 or 12, like when I realized that I got was like, it was, I could probably play like professional baseball just by like compare myself to my peers and like you know my teammates that were because we had some good travel ball teams when I was playing out mm -hmm. of Corpus and like you know being one of the better players in the team you're like oh I could maybe like take this serious now like right. I obviously want to go to college but like the professional level it's like maybe I could do that too and so it probably started when I was like being real serious about it when I was like 11 or 12. Nice and you you know in baseball it's such a competitive sport man baseball I think we see this when kids in t-ball you know the 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 talent gap is really big right so in t-ball and they start moving up begin to coach pitch you're getting to you know 50 feet 60 yeah. feet pitching they're playing real baseball they get into high school they're at 90 60 they're rolling and then we start seeing the the gap the talent gap get thinner Small, and thinner small. and thinner right? and kids are right there with each other now right they're right there just you know and they separate really there's a big separation at that younger age but as they start to move up it gets thinner and thinner mm. so i would say probably around 13 14 like you said is when you started realizing that okay even in that talent gap, but it's thinning up. You were, you still had a little, yeah. a little edge in there, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, what did that look like? Were you know, were you putting in? What type of work were you doing at that age? And you know, the mentality, that mindset for a thirteen-year-old. And when I was thirteen, I don't think, you know, that <laughs> yeah. that mindset, man. What you know, what, what 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 was that like? I mean, it was just baseball nonstop. Like it yeah. was you know four to five days a week of training. Like when it came to like baseball related, baseball related stuff. So I mean, it was. I mean, when I was 13, that's what, that was actually the, on the, the year I played with the Houston. I played with the Houston Manitos that year. Mm -hmm. And that's where I met Ray and sort of we started our relationship. And we played every weekend in Houston. Right. Like, at least, like every, we probably had like two weekends off the whole summer. We played, I think we looked it up yesterday, actually like 78 <laughs> games in a summer. Wow, like, dude. As 13-year-olds. So, yeah. I mean, it was nonstop. But that's what you, like, we sort of, like, knew that as a kid. Like, if you want to be the best, like, you had to, like, just get in the cage. And, like, whether it was private lessons or team practices, like, it didn't matter. Like, it was mm -hmm. just, I was I was in the cage four to five days a week and then there playing on the weekend. So, there you go. that's what it is. Man, you know, I think also in Texas it's a, a unique opportunity, man. I don't know, Chris, you can probably talk to this, too, because you know, the weather permits us to play that much, exactly. right? You think about some kids who don't live in Texas, say you live in the Midwest, man, you just got the spring and the summer with the, once the weather comes in for winter, 
unless you have an indoor facility, right? Yeah, I mean, they're not going to sure. be able to play too much. Yeah, and no doubt. The weather's <laughs> down here lets us right. play all the way, you know, till December. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, <laughs> we know it doesn't, sometimes don't even get cold in Christmas yeah. down here. So yeah. our boys are able to play all the way till December, you know. January, they're able to get outside, start their long toss, right. you know, get ready for the February season. And yeah. so, I mean, our, our boys really, you know, they could, they play all year long. Year long, South right? Texas. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. And so 13, 14, you're realizing you're putting in that work. Um, you get drafted out of high school. Yeah. Right. So let's talk about that. So how exciting was that? You know, was that that pinnacle? Was there you're like, man, you know, I did it. It was, uh, so I thought I was going to go in the first round, so, like, it was a little disappointing not going in the first round, but, like, once it happened, like, I was disappointed all the way up to the point I got picked, because I was like, no, I should have been picked, like, you know, 20 picks ago, but, like, once it happened, I, it was like, whoa, like, this is crazy, like, this yeah. is, like, this is the best day of my life, That's obviously, awesome, like, it's like, I mean, I'm getting to play professional baseball, like, everything... Like, obviously, the dream was still to play in the big leagues. Like, mm -hmm. that was obviously the main dream. But, like, you know, the, the dream 1B is to just to play professional baseball. Right. So, like, to get like to get picked, it was like, I'm like, I did it. Like, right. all this work that we put in for, you know, like, from 5 to 18, like, it it, it paid off. Right. Like, it's, like, it's, you know, to the first, to the second goal. But, like, <clears throat> it's, it was sort of a relief. Like, now when I wasn't going to have to go to college, that was nice, too. Like, because I just didn't want to go to school. So... <laughs> Like that was that was really nice not having to do the school thing. Right. So you get drafted, you start your minor league play, right? And I think, you know, I I talk to a lot of the kids in the gym. I have signees that have come in, they come in and out <clears throat> and we talk and I say, Hey, you know, you you work so hard to this point, now you gotta work harder. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to find another gear, you have to find some more mental toughness, right? To keep going and keep competing and to kind of get through it now, right? Mm -hmm. What do you find was the biggest challenge making that jump? So right out of high school, you jump into the minors. Mm -hmm. What was the biggest challenge for you? Honestly, probably the staying in shape thing. Yeah. Like that was when you go from you're in high school and you can like you have baseball class every day, like you're pretty active every day. Like even like, you know, in the fall, like during school, you're moving around like baseball class, like stuff training, like for travel ball, mm -hmm. whatever it is to like professional baseball, you come home for the off season and there's no one telling you you got to do anything anymore mm -hmm. like, <laughs> like there's no one like i mean obviously i knew i had to like you know work out but mm -hmm. like i was like two three days a week would be good like right. whatever i don't need to take it that seriously like i'm gonna eat whatever i want still because <laughs> i'm like that's what i did in high school and i didn't gain a pound like i was you know, six foot 200 pounds for four straight seasons I right. whatever i wanted whenever i wanted and so that first off season was like a little realization that like hey, this is different now like i gained 30 pounds like some of it was like some of it was you know big big muscle i worked out mm -hmm. really bad like it was powerlifting. it was stupid but right. like a lot of it was not good weight either so right. it took a lot that was like my realization of like well this is a little bit different like i gotta like take this a little more seriously when it comes to the training aspect where in high school it was like All right, i'm just gonna show up and i know i'm gonna be the best player on the field like, right yeah i had to just dish off natural talent mm -hmm. And when being obviously in a pro ball, we all had natural talent. So mm -hmm. it was like who takes care of their body off the field, who trains well in the off season. And that first off season, I was really bad. So that was probably the biggest like eye opening experience for me was just the training aspect of it. Wow. So you go through high school, and then that's when when you realize right that that talent gap again. Yeah, like you said, strength, everyone yeah. is studs. Now we got to have that competitive mm -hmm. edge, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so then you know you run through that career, you get called up, mm -hmm. right? I think a trade later, is that right? Yeah. You said like a trade later, yeah. and then uh, you get called up. Do you remember your first game? Oh, yeah. San yeah. Francisco. <laughs> uh, September 7th. <laughs> I have a tattooed on me. I think look at your yeah, watch. I have, a I, have a, yeah, I have a tattooed on me. So, That's awesome. Um, September 7th and 20 in San Francisco. Well, we're only six days away, man. Yeah. Today's the second, the first, or the yeah. second? What are we today? The September 2nd? Second, second man. Second. Five days away but, from the anniversary, yeah, right? Yeah. That's awesome, so, man. It was... Uh, <laughs> Crazy. Not a good day. Didn't play well, but <laughs> I mean, it was what it, it didn't matter. I didn't care. Yeah. Like, honestly, at the time, I was like, well, I was playing the big leagues. It doesn't matter what I did. I right. like an O for my whole career. Like, I got to play in the big leagues. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome, matters. man. So, it was so awesome. great, man. Um, so you, uh, you, you're now working with the Bandidos organization here in South Texas, right? Yeah. You're originally from Corpus, yes. right? Okay. Uh, I know, Chris, you're, you've been doing this for a really long time. You know, you, had, yes. uh, uh, you have currently LB21, which is a, you, uh, like a, your business with yes. baseball tournament, the youth, right? Yeah. In, and I think I, f I first met you 
It's probably 10 years ago, so, right? When you first moved from Corpus. Moved here, yeah, 13 years ago. Right, right 13 years ago. And yeah. you had the, the biscuits. Yeah, the Corpus Christi biscuits, biscuits are really yeah. great, exactly, uh, yeah. great team, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, and I remember you coming down, you know, we, we got to have the kids play a little bit. Lake Monsters. Um, yeah, we had the Lake <laughs> Monsters, right? The power. Yeah. A lot of those guys are playing, man. So those yeah. kids are playing, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, let's talk about that, man. So let's talk about that journey from, from Corpus. So you're in Corpus. You're doing your, yeah. your how Corpus. long were you doing the that that or how long you've been doing working with the organization like that well, we've been doing i've been <clears> with the youth probably for 15 years already nice. since you know my son started um then we started the biscuits and started you know taking them all over the place to play baseball yeah. and uh so in at, in that time you know i ended up taking over u triple sa tournaments and throwing tournaments in in corpus super uh, competitive man i would say yeah. great tournaments dude. yeah they're yeah, like really you. great tournaments yeah so <laughs> we started you know just to do good tournaments for our team to play in, right. you know, 15 years ago. And, you know, we're still going at it pretty strong now, you know, from USSA to, you know, Cecil Fielder, we, we partnered up with him for a few years nice. and did tournaments under him, uh, which was a great experience meeting Cecil Fielder. I yeah, mean, for know, sure. So that's yeah. A, that's a pretty good guy to know. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was fun for a few years. We'd, we would do our tournaments down here and the world series would be in California. So we got to go to California a couple of years and then, then, you know, going back to U-Triple-S-A because, you know, got a bigger job title with them. Right. Uh, not just throwing tournaments, but also running uh, South Texas, um, the Valley, Corpus awesome. Laredo for tournaments. And then after that, you know, PG started making their splash. Uh, of course, their perfect game in high school is the place to play. Right. But uh, they started taking over Houston in the youth game. So uh, the main guy in Houston, which runs all the youth pro- uh, all over the country now, uh, you know, called me one day and said, hey, I want you to come over to PG with us. And awesome. it was a little scary, but because uh, mm-hmm. U-Trip was so, and the youth was so big yeah, for so long, yeah. um, you know, it was kind of one of those decisions, you know, do we jump on board with it? And knowing that the high school was so successful, I was like, one day the youth's going to hit for perfect game. And right. we made the switch, uh, you know, three going on three years now. And now the perfect game youth tournaments are just as big as the yeah. high school. I mean, they're, they're doing really good. So, uh but yeah, the, like I said, the tournaments are going great. Uh, from there, it kind of just catapulted from having the biscuits 15 years ago to keeping, you know, some of the best players in South Texas together, like with, you know, my son, right. you know, Aaron Nixon, yeah. you know, whole bunch, uh, Victor Loa, Jonathan Martinez, yep. all guys from the Valley who are now playing college baseball. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just getting them, you know, getting them together with Corpus talent and uh, just building, you know, as we went on for these 15 years. Uh, like I said, five years ago, LB21 started as a high school program just to take um, my son's team with Aaron and all them to mm-hmm. Houston to play in a big event. It right. was Future Series, which uh, has a bunch of you know a bunch of MLB guys who were executives and, and uh, scouts and stuff. So it was a chance to get them to play in front of you know major league scouts mm-hmm. and uh, also college scouts. So we started the LB21 with that and. You know, a year, two years later, you know, the high school program, people wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we started that going. And, you know, a few years ago, Wyatt, you know, when he would come back down from playing his seasons, you know, wanted to, you know, get in and help coach and be a part of it and kind of see if this is a route he might want to take when yeah. he's done playing baseball. And uh, ended up being a really good fit. You know, Wyatt and giving all the kids a lot of knowledge and really loves to coach. And uh, so, you know, we just went from there, you know, got the LB21 baseball going and high school and we just started you know helping kids go to college you know and yeah. over the last five years i mean we've had over 50 kids that have committed to go you know division one division two junior college uh and shit, it's you know it just blew up dude that's well, awesome man that's a, wow. that you know i was just i was just had a podcast with another athlete and she was a participant on American Ninja. And we were talking about there's so much talent in the valley man yeah you know and if you just go back you know, a few years ago. I mean, actually, the last 10 years have probably been the best growth, right? Where we have, you know, like, we have so many kids going out, you know, doing, we have swimmers who are, like, Olympian, world-class swimmers, right? Um, Baseball, soccer, football, right? We're getting out there. Um, We we may not get the best chances down here sometimes, right? Like, a bit heavier metropolitan area. But I think it's awesome that you're able to create something for the kids where they can come in, join, get 
go to the showcases now in those areas and most importantly like, represent 956 yeah. or is it what's it, Corpus 316 361 three, six, three, six, or 361 yeah. right yeah. so it's awesome man that you're able to create that right and yeah. to take these kids out there and to get them going and to give them a platform to like a showcase where people can come down and check them out yeah. you know and they can go and see them i remember you know taking the kids one time down uh, to a ut camp when they were very i mean my kids julian was probably like nine or something they were just little so this ut camp you know so i take them up that weekend and it's really funny we're going through and i think you know either my older son liam or someone's wearing mccallan all-stars right the mccallan <laughs> and i think at the time i want to say maybe trey but or Tres oh, Tres, maybe yeah, yeah maybe yeah. Tres, maybe it was him yeah. but there was an or jaime garcia maybe was one of the the pitchers that came out of sherry land mm -hmm. or from that okay. with bickerton's yeah. uh, going on at the time and they go up to him and, you know, my son, then they see they're filling the drills or whatever. But that was really great. And that's when I, it was eye opening for me because he looks at him. He's like, hey, kid, uh, he goes, uh, you from Reynosa? <laughs> and my son's like, no. He's like, well, you go to, you're going to go to Sherryland? So the coach is at UT, right? Just yeah. from the shirt, the McCallum, we're like, hey, are you going to go to Sherryland? Sherryland? I thought that's so great now because yeah. I can guarantee you, man, you know, 10 years before that, there was no way they're even considering or looking right yeah. down here, looking at some. Uh, of the athletes. So, I mean, that's awesome, man. Yeah. What do you think was the biggest challenge, dude, trying to, you know, get into these showcases? Was that harder? Was it harder getting the teams together? What did you find was, like, the biggest challenge for you? I mean, the biggest challenge, like I said, is, is getting getting the college coaches to see a, see the kids from South Texas, yeah. you know? Uh, like I said, it's the place to be is Houston, you yeah. know? I mean, all the scouts are there. A lot of schools are there. Uh, they have so many venues and, and uh, fields for high school where coaches just go to one area and see 10 baseball games, you know? Right. So the biggest challenge is, like I said, getting our kids out there to get seen. Right. And uh, that was main, the main reason why to myself, you know, a year ago, sat in the backyard and, you know, talked about, you know, what, what's next? Yeah. What's, what's the next step to help these kids get to where they want to go? Uh, how do we keep growing? Uh, and, you know, luckily this, this year, after the high school season, Ray DeLeon, uh, the owner of the Banditos called us and says, hey, you know, we, we want y'all both to come on board. Right. And, uh, you know, but this time, you know, not just one team to be banditos from the Valley, like for y'all to run, you know, South Texas, run awesome. San Antonio, run Austin, help me with Dallas, like help with the whole program. Like I got Houston. He's like, I've done it for 30 years. Right. I don't need help here. Lockdown. He's like, but <laughs> we need help all over Texas. Mm -hmm. He's like, and if you two guys are willing to help me with all those places, and especially – build in in south texas the valley and corpus and laredo uh he's like i think this could be a good fit and uh like i said why did myself talk and you know we felt that you know this is another avenue to where we get the help from ray de leon and, and the bandito organization to get our kids the opportunity to get seen you know and bring bring uh scouts down here mm -hmm. to bring colleges down here to south texas you know corpus or mccallan to see our kids to get to know them a little better because yeah. lots of these kids in Houston they see those scouts from when they're 12 13 14 15 and our kids probably get never get in front of those schools right never get in front of those coaches maybe yeah. one time yeah and you know to get a scholarship if you're not throwing if you're not Aaron Nixon throwing 90 miles right. per hour at eighth grade mm -hmm. you're not getting you're not getting they're not gonna Texas is not committing you right you know but if Texas sees you you know when you're 11 12 13 14 and they see the how 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 much you've been improving every yeah. year now there's a shot right now there's a shot they know who you know little jimmy is you know they, right. they've seen him for four or five years so that was the biggest thing you know going the bandito route you know bringing the uh, south texas banditos down here is giving our kids more of an opportunity like i told you last four or five years 50 60 kids out of our program going to college That's awesome man now the next five years we want to double that we want to mm -hmm. triple that yeah uh, to to get these you know to get more south texas kids in the college and i see i see the the growth man i see you posting they're adding teams you're adding yeah. more teams that they're coming in you guys are getting gaining some really good steam yeah. <clears throat> what age divisions do you start with how how like are you going from 5u all the way up or what's it look like right now we're looking you know <clears throat> i mean we'll, we'll take you know from 6u all the mm -hmm. way to high school but uh right now you know we're really you know eight year olds right. to you know to high to 18 year olds so okay. Um, like I said, I mean, the one thing I've learned, you know, people will say, well, you know, my kid's a little, you know, he's, he's six, you know, or seven, mm -hmm. but baseball is played, you know, the same way from 
See, when you're younger to you're older, yeah, right? there's no, let me wait till he's 12 or 13. Yeah. That's a lot of stuff over the last 15 years being with the guys I've been with that helped me learn a lot about the, mm -hmm. the game to help kids get to the next level. Lots of parents want to wait, you know, they want to wait, they want to wait, you know, but the thing about it is baseball is not going to wait on you. Yeah, man. It's not going to wait on you. It's going to keep passing you by and, and, it's, and people are going to keep growing. And like I said, we're, we're at a disadvantage down here compared to Houston and Austin and Dallas mm -hmm. with all the facilities and everything they have out there. So, you know, we, we can't wait, you know, we got it. We have to get the kids with, you know, with the right people, the right organization, the right trainers mm -hmm. and all that stuff to, to get them where they need to get to. The one thing parents don't want to hear is, you know, hey, we got to get your son better at this. He's got to get faster. He's got to right. get quicker. You know, we got to get him in some better shape. Like Wyatt said, you know, got to the you know pro ball and you know, thought I could work out once or twice. Like it's not, yeah. it's not like that. You know, if you're looking to go play at the next level. You got to not just be a really good baseball player. You got to be really good at nutrition. You got to right. be really good at, you know, training mm -hmm. and getting your body right and mm -hmm. becoming the best athlete you can because baseball is not an easy sport. No, it's you not. Know? Yeah. So it's not the sport you just, hey, I wake up and every morning and I just go to baseball class and i'll play my game <laughs> and i go home and don't work at it ever again like right. it, it's hard baseball is it's tough it's a game of failure so yeah 100 you, know, you have to be you know have to be the best athlete you could be to get to where you want to get to absolutely you know baseball is hard man it's a tough sport and to play at that level yeah. you know why let's go back man so you get you get that, that first game mm -hmm. right um nerves i'm sure yeah. right absolute nerves okay mm -hmm. to this point um you're you're been training the regiments better getting out there mm -hmm. you get in there i want to ask you how much of your mental toughness would you contribute to your weight training or to your diet and the discipline you had in training and preparing your body like chris mm -hmm. said for those for in that moment um i definitely think it helped at some point because i had like i probably had my first my first five years of pro ball, like I worked, like the workouts got better. Like I found, a, I got a trainer in Corpus, mm -hmm. Jeff Palooza. Palooza. I never had to say. I really don't know, I never know how to say Jeff's last name. Jeff Palooza. Jeff Palooza. We got you. <laughs> um, and uh, I still, I worked out like there for three years, from probably fourteen to sixteen. I, I did my workouts, but I kept eating the same. Like that right. was. So I went in the off season 2017 and I went from 240 at the beginning of that off season and left that off season at 196 so that was and that and that was the that was the most mentally taxing challenging like part of my career honestly was that off season was like I didn't eat anything besides like burger patties and string cheese and pickles and that's like wow. every <laughs> single meal the whole off season like wow. twice a day three patties pickle two string cheese and that was my that was my food all day Dang. two meals a day no sodas and i lost 50 pounds like and that was but that but it was like from what i was used to eating taco bell and mcdonald's and Whataburger <laughs> like every meal or mom's chicken fried steak or lasagna it was like i'm only eating burger patties like right. that's literally it Dang. and i would definitely say like being able to do that for a full off season like taking like the headaches of like not having sugar like having caffeine oh, withdrawal, man. And, like all those like withdrawals of not having certain foods and that, that like cause you to have like headaches and stuff like that like that was a grind like it was mm -hmm. and that's and i mean it took me a long time to get to the big leagues anyways like in general from compared to most people mm -hmm. so like definitely there's the whole process of like not taking me eight years to get to the big leagues was definitely i mean it helped when i was up there like because it was like it was like a relief to be up there now right. like it was like yeah there was pressure but it was like bro, i've been through everything there is in this game like it's <laughs> eight been eight nine years most people take three or four like that took me eight like so <laughs> right. it was pretty much more relaxing when i got up there than anything yeah i really contribute you know when when kids at that age and you know i take that 14 15 and then you know it's it's that transition for me i really see that transition transition from middle school to high school mm -hmm. is a big one you know, especially with sports, right? Because you're going to, your, uh, it's a bigger pond, bigger kids, right? From that yeah. middle school, high school. Then you have that high school to college or high school to pro, right? And I really feel like the one thing that kids can control, and you can tell me if you see this when your kids are training, when you're training the kids or when you're, uh, your personal experience, you know, I, I preach this to the athletes in, in the gym. And I tell them, look, man, this mental toughness to get through that next rep, to have the discipline to eat the two patties and string cheese, right? And pickles for consistently along when you want that lasagna and that's like, but when you start developing that mental toughness, right? And 
this is a sport of failure, right? We talked about it. It's a, so when you're in there and you're grinding out, man, you're hitting that squat, you're hitting that one rep and you got to get in, they're going to, I really feel this is a big part, but not the benefits of, of training to the sport. I mean, we, we can go on for days, but I'm saying that mental toughness that it brings, right? And the discipline that it brings to be able to get up. I'm going to eat a certain way because I'm going to work out a certain way. It's going to help me on the field. It's going to help me uh, with my physique. It's going to help me with strength, help me with a lot of power. And I really feel that, is a big that contributes so much to athletes man and i feel like the better and sooner they can develop that discipline mm -hmm. the better results they'll have out there even training would you say do you see that in some of the yeah, kids 100%. right i mean even like yeah. a younger age right yeah. the one kid who gets his like 100 push-ups in you know <laughs> yeah. in the morning and sit up yeah. and you know just some body weight yeah. stuff but they start developing the habits yeah. hydration recovery mm -hmm. they start seeing the benefits of how weight training is affecting them in their game yeah and they kind of move. So I always want to ask, man, because I really felt I really feel that's a yeah. big, you know, yeah. crunch time. Yeah. Bases loaded. You know, you go up there. I mean, that's taxing. Right. That's a pressure. And I feel that edge. Right. Is like yeah. that mental toughness knowing I got through that one rep. I went through this, you know, and I mean, just outside of the pressures of the game. All right. Just outside of the pressure yeah. of the game and, and that yeah. the, the situation of the play. You know, I, I really. I really talk to the kids about that. I think that's that one thing because there are some kids who'll cheat a rep, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? They'll cheat yeah. a rep, or you turn your back and uh, they might not go right and get go after that ball maybe the best they can. But if you take advantage of every single rep and every single chance and you just maximize, I think that really is what yeah. can create a in that yeah. talent gap we talked about, yeah. right? With the mental toughness and so you know the game becomes a little easier, man. Yeah. Um, so, so you guys get, we get the banditos, we're down in South Texas, super exciting, right? Yeah. So we're rolling these teams out. Um, what does it look like? So, you know, I'm a parent, I'm looking to try to get my middle school son rolling in here. You know, what, what does that process look like? What's that looking like? Well, like I said, right now, you know, we're just bringing, you know, the South Texas banditos down here right now. We're, we're working on, you know, yesterday we went to see a facility, you know, get, get our facility up and, mm -hmm. and running, uh, Hopefully, you know, that uh, that deal goes down today. Nice. And, uh, you know, we, we get going on that and hopefully get it here uh, in a few months, get it nice. open in a few months. Uh, but like I said, you know, once we get that going, you know, we're looking to, to do stuff that nobody does down here, yeah. you know, hit tracks, you know, rap sodos, have, you know, weight rooms in there, you mm -hmm. know, all the stuff for the pitchers, you know, getting with uh, Bo Nixon the other day, you mm -hmm. know, he wants to, you know, help us, you know, put a pitching lab in there to help pitchers of course something awesome. where Aaron has right. when he's here in the valley as mm -hmm. well you know he needs a place uh but all the other pitchers like Evan Maldonado yeah. is a pitcher you know Victor Loa mm -hmm. you know Jonathan Martinez we have a lot you know and then all the guys who are playing in the professional you know right now le uh, professional ball um you know have a, a place to them go do you know their pitching stuff right you know uh getting the hit tracks you know why like I said the hitter you mm -hmm. know he you know the hit tracks like he said you know he'll tell you again you know he feels like that was one of the big tools that helped him get to the big leagues, you know, with his trainers where he was going uh, to train with other hitting coaches. Uh, having that hit track really helped them learn more about hitting, you know, mm -hmm. so we want to get that in there. Uh, like I said, we want to we just want to have a facility where we could help get these kids better. Yeah. Um, but like I said, the, to come play with us, you know, the one thing is the banditos, you know, we'll we go to the best, you know. Uh, we'll go to the, we go to the best tournaments, you know, we'll be in Houston playing as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they'll be going to Georgia, going to Florida. Um, but the biggest thing is, you know, like I said, I like what we're going to do with Banditos, like September 25th in Cal Allen, in, Cor in Corporate mm -hmm. Cal Allen High School. Uh, we're going to do our first uh, college camp. Uh, we'll be bringing down, uh, we're bringing down Texas, bringing UT, we're bringing U of H, Stephen F. Austin, and the powerhouse JUCO San, uh, San Jack. Dude, nice. So, you know, we're going to bring those schools down uh, to to be there and watch the camp. So, you know, we're going to, like I said, we want awesome. to put these kids in front of these coaches as much as possible. And uh, so that's going to be our first one with hopes of next year, you know, when we have our facility ready here, you know, we bring, mm -hmm. you know, one or two of those to the Valley. Right. One or two of those in Corpus. So now we have four different College camps where we bring down A and M, O U, mm -hmm. you know U T Arlington, Texas State, uh, Texas, U of H, so bringing those guys down, um, you know. So now a whole month of 
college camps for South Texas. Man, you got two here <laughs> close to, in your hometown where you get to sleep in your bed. Yeah. You got to sleep in your bed, <laughs> get, you know, get, have a good breakfast yeah. at home with your mom, and then work out for some really good college coaches yeah. where instead of driving five hours, six hours, seven hours mm -hmm. to go to this camp and – most people work, right? So when are they leaving? After work. So right. they're traveling, you know, at six o'clock, seven o'clock at night, five, six, seven hours to get to this camp. Yeah. And then their son has to be at the camp at seven in the morning to check in. And you want him to go perform and, you know, to be his best. Yeah. And that's hard. Yeah. You know, that's hard mm -hmm. for a kid. So if we could bring those guys, those schools down to South Texas, now we're giving our kids an opportunity to succeed. Yeah. You know, and, and like I said, keep putting them, you know, the youth, kid, when, when a kid's nine years old and he loves baseball and he's pretty good, there's a good chance he could probably play all the way through high school. Right. So now we're giving them dreams. We're giving them hopes. We're giving them chances to be like, hey, I could play for UT one day or I could right. go to A&M or Oklahoma. So now they have something to keep working for because every year they see Oklahoma in the Valley. They see U of H. They see A&M. They see UT. So that's stuff that, you know, and it's huge. It's yeah. huge for South Texas and – that's a that's another big thing that we want to do. And like I said, you know, we just want to give all these kids in South Texas the opportunity to get to, to the next level and go play college baseball. Man, I love that. And I think that's a great dude. And it's such a good opportunity for the kids in the Valley. And I yeah. uh, mean, I wish you the best of luck. That's awesome, man. It's so great. I'm so glad uh, you're doing that, Chris. Um, so I want to talk about some of the training, right? So let's talk about, you know, kind of uh, maybe not a typical day, but kind of the idea. So you'll have the facility up. We'll do a lot of skills, right? So you do a lot of hitting. You do a whole lot of um, uh, agility drills, I'm sure, right? Field Just kind of related, yeah. to, related, related to it. Um, there's a recent um, idea going out, right, where they're, where they're talking about uh, it's a hashtag that's been running, and I, and I just know this because of like, <laughs> right? Cause like the social media bit. But I'm I'm a kind of a believer. I just want to get your take. What what you think, Christine? What do you think? Um, there's this there's this idea running where you know it's like train more and play less, right? So it's about playing, get those cuts, get those reps, absolutely in that season. We talked about having the year round opportunity, right, all the yeah. time, and. You know, with, with some of those year round, with a year round playing, there can be a little bit of overuse injuries if you don't take care of, take care of yourself, right? There's no mobility issues, things like that. So, you know, they're always talking about, you know, train more, play less, right? Hit your season, you come out of there and then train really hard. Train your skills really hard, right? Get stronger or find that little deficit in your game, right? Work that off season, right? Come really hard and come back that season and be, kind of be ready for it, right? Yeah. Um, what do you guys feel? I mean, what, what do you think? You know, what's your take on, on that? I mean, it's it sounds very like pro ballish yeah. for a high school kid or whatever age group you want to say it is, and like honestly, it's not a it's it's not bad. But like when you like if you're if you have the opportunity to play, I think it's a little bit different. Like if you're not if you're in like the north, northeast, midwest, mm -hmm. like where it's freezing cold, it's like yeah, you got to shut down and train, just train, 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 right. train, train. But for like for guys like to have. The opportunity to play in the south like there's nothing better than game reps right like and i'm and that's a part of my business is doing lessons it's like right. so i could sit here and sell you like just train and just come do lessons mm -hmm. come do lessons come mm -hmm. do lessons it's like but for me it's like we're not going to see if it's working unless we're playing in a game like right. i can put, i can turn the machine up like i can put you like like i can make it like game realistic with the with the, what's coming out of the machine and whatnot but mm -hmm. it's still not it's a closed environment it's mm -hmm. a, this is a safe environment for you to succeed or fail right. like I, i'm going to see if it like i need to see as your coach your hitting coach whatever it is to see if it if you if it works in a live environment right. like you know like where you're gonna have nervousness like and because all it goes into account with what we're doing with like someone's swing it's like i like it just it, like you just got to do you got to make adjustments for everybody, even if it's nerves and stuff right. like that. If someone gets too amped up, like we got to do something mechanically to sort of calm it down. Like, right. And so there's no nerves whenever I'm you're hitting inside my cage right. in a inside facility with the hit tracks on. Like it's like it's just it doesn't matter. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you ground out to the, the little like Lego shortstop guy playing short on the TV. Like right. if you hit a homer, it doesn't matter because it doesn't count. Right. Like I need to like so I mean. I don't mind the try. You, I think you. The problem is, I think what we see compared to like I know with Chris, he like in like this newer newer era. I've seen with the younger kids when I've started because I've been doing this last two or three years now, mm -hmm. like training there, like training kids, doing team practices. Like there's just not as much like work. Like honestly, like right. from the like like compared to what I was went through and mm -hmm. what I did to get to where I was, 
like what Chris and what all these guys that actually are playing Division One baseball, like that are that we've put through and like that I've that I've seen is like it was four to five days a week. Right, like you're working. This yeah. wasn't like mm-hmm. all right, we got two team practices a week and that's all you do. It's right. like we had our team practice like once or twice a week and then it was like three or four days of lessons. It didn't matter how much it like it costs. Like right. my parents were in debt like when I played travel baseball. Like right. I got them out of it and that, yeah. I mean. Like me getting drafted, like yeah. I got them out of it. Yeah. But like they got they 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 put all their chips in the middle on me mm-hmm. playing baseball. Yeah, and like obviously it's not for some parents, but like right. it's just that's been that's the difference I see now as a coach compared to like when I what it, what I know I took for me to get to where I was. Right. It was four to five days a week of training and then playing on the weekends. So yeah, it was like like it wasn't just two days a week practice and then hey we're gonna go play this weekend. It was. Like, I mean, with the Banditos when I was 13, it was four to, like, we would stay in Houston for weeks at a time because we would just stay up there and practice. Make right. sure we were practicing, doing our stuff, and then play in the weekend. We played 80 games and practiced four <laughs> days a week. Yeah, man, like, yeah. You know, I mean, you add that up in a summer, that's, you know, probably 300, 200 days just in the <laughs> 250 days of summer. We were doing baseball 200, like, right. you know, probably five days off the whole summer. Mm-hmm. So that's the biggest thing, like, when you go back to, like, training, train, 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 and not play, I think it's a mix. Like, yeah. you got to train, 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 and play. Have, play, play, really, play, play, play. have really good balance, right? Yeah, Take like, those skills, put them in a life situation. Like that's yeah, man, that's yeah. great. You talk about nerves, mm-hmm. right? How can nerves mess up a swing? I would never even thought just, about that, but it gets wacky, up. right? Yeah, it just yeah. like it's just, there's little things like you know. But then the thing is, now they have like with like whenever I was coming up, there was no BDA, there was no like there was no high school training, like right. middle school <laughs> physical training. Yeah, like you worked out at your high school, right? Like for the class, but yeah. there was no like. Bro, let's actually go get like physically better. It was sort of like, yeah, we can go like a speed guy or like yeah. you know, we can do like speed guy, like you know, <laughs> not, not like really getting faster, but like there was no trainer, personal trainers. There right. was no lifting the right way. Like mm-hmm. it was like I didn't know what a hamstring workout was till I got to Pro Bowl. Like Damn. I literally know what an RDL was, didn't like and that's why my hamstrings got you know blown out the first two <laughs> years. But yeah. like I now that kids have that, it's like you should be able to practice, practice, practice play all the time and still be able to physically handle it because they you have the resources now to do recovery stuff right. like we didn't have the leg just, like compression we didn't have none of this stuff yeah. like we didn't have thero guns <laughs> and like like all this post-workout pre-workout it was really just yeah. show up and play baseball every day like right. no working out at all like yeah. so like there are resources now for these kids to be able to train as much as they want and play as much as they want if they really want to like take it super seriously i love that man sure. it's a great take and I, there's there's a lot of truth in that yeah. i think that's right on man i think you nailed it I, I I'd have to agree with you. The amount of resources now, yeah. right, with recovery, with your sleep cycle, recovery, mm-hmm. diet, and then you know, like the compression sleeve. As funny as it may sound, what a great deal. And then yeah. strength. And I, I say this is like the maybe fourth thing in a row I say this, but strength is that continuum of care. I've yep. been saying this a lot. Yeah. Right, you you have mm-hmm. strong. If you're strong, it's gonna help you prevent injury. Yep. Right, there's a muscular imbalance. It may come out later, and you know that may result mm-hmm. in more injury too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that's that's right on, man. Yeah. I think you nailed it. That's yeah. absolutely right. And I think too, you know, on, on that part of you know more practice and yeah. less play, you know, th- there there's stuff too now that you're that you're with Tom House and so many uh, experts, pitching guys that are their arm guys are talking. You know, there's a point. Yeah, pitchers. You know, we definitely got to take care of them. But you know, have me having a son who just had shoulder surgery. Right. Um, and not knowing when he was younger, you know, he was catching and pitching, catching and pitching, mm-hmm. catching and pitching. Well, that's somewhere where as coaches, as people who are taking care of these kids playing in our programs, we got to be able to talk to parents and like, okay, is your son, you know, do you want him to pitch? Or are we going to catch? Right. You know, is he, you know, and th- same thing, you know, with shortstops, you know, shortstops have a long throw. Third basements have long throw. They do. You know, after they pitch, are we running them out there to play third and short the next game? You know, right. like there's things that we have to be able to do to make sure we don't put those kids in those, those, you know, we can't have somebody catch five games that weekend and then throw in the championship game. Right. right? That's not healthy. You know, mm-hmm. that's stuff that, you know, of course, I've learned over the last 15 years having a my son who, right. you know, who used to do that stuff. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like I said, at the end of the day, you know, he tells me after surgery, Dad, I wouldn't change a thing because right. I love playing this game. Yeah. But that's something that now when I talk to younger parents and people who have kids coming up, I let them know that. Hey, yeah. man, you know, you got to be careful. You, you know, you got if your son's a catcher, like, you know, you know, we really pitching wise, you've got to be smart, you know, right. but now I have a buddy who has a bandito team in Austin who his son's uh, they're 10, they're 10 now. Well, 
since they got back from the World Series, he's been on two months of arm care already. Ten yeah. years old. Well, you know, he bought that. You know, he bought that. You know, he's he. They got a program from yeah. the the conditioning coach for the for the Dodgers who has some something called heat something. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. anyways, it's a throwing program that they do every day. You it's know, awesome. and it's an arm. It's stretching. It's just so much stuff. But you know, the kid. You know, he's like the funny thing. He's like. Not that it's his, you know, it's good and he's recovering and he's getting his arm stronger. He's like, man, I, when he when he started, he was throwing, you know, 50 miles per hour. Now, in two months done, he's at 55. He's wow. like, it's gotten his arm so much stronger, but it's healthy. He's like, he's a like, crazy thing. I'm doing the workouts with him in the morning. He's like, and now my arm feels better than ever. <laughs> BP. So, you know, there's so much more stuff that yeah. that we know now. That if our kid is that guy who's going to be a year-round ball player, baseball player, and doesn't play another sport, we have so much stuff for them to do to make sure we prevent prevent those injuries. That it's safe, yeah, right? All safe. the progressions and, yeah, are and, safe. And, and yeah. Like I said, you know, there's you know the BDAs. There's places out there yeah. who can help you get get better and, yeah. and and do that rehab stuff. So you know, and massages and you know right. the deep tissue stuff mm-hmm. like that stuff that you know you got to go break up. All that fashion, all the throwing, yeah. all the, mm-hmm. the working out and stuff. A kid trains five, six days, he should be getting some kind of recovery right. stuff, you know, every week because that's a lot of work that they yeah. put on. And I feel like when our kids were younger going through this 15 years ago and why, like, our kids, you know, they didn't have that stuff to go right. get cryo or, <laughs> <laughs> you know, do stuff to recover. Yeah. And uh, now there's so much stuff. So if you are playing year-round, there's a lot of ways that you could help take care of your, your kids. You yeah, know, for sure. No, for sure. I think that's, I think you nailed it, man. That's a great take. Mm-hmm. Um, how about the, and the pro level, man, how much recovery, what did, what did you see up there? Were they using uh, more cryo, uh, more heat? What, what, what was whatever. the things that helped you, man? You know, at that time? Uh, I don't, honest, if, yeah, honest <laughs> opinion. Like I don't really, I didn't do a lot of recovery stuff. Yeah. Like even till the, like, you know, the last couple of years, like I just, like, I think it's more of a mental thing, recovery stuff. I yeah. don't think it actually physically helps me. <laughs> I, that's a personal opinion. Like, right. I think it's just like, oh, you put the leg boots on, like, for compression. It's like, yeah, they'll feel good for that. They'll feel good for that first couple of minutes. Is it going to feel any better tomorrow? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, but they have, I mean, the professional level, especially in the big leagues, I mean, like whatever possible recovery tool you could think of right. is there. Like, Cause that's a lot of games. It's back I mean, to back. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, unlimited resources, too, mm-hmm. so they can, you know, like, hot tubs like you know saunas just i mean we have a chiropractor come in once a day like masseuse would come in once every other day Mm -hmm. like just sort of whatever you needed like and if you like saw something that like you need you thought was like a good idea for recovery they just go ahead and get it it just bring it in like whether you know it didn't matter what it was so It got more, it, it was crazy because I like whenever I first got in, the recovery was like a thing, but it wasn't like, I mean, I got drafted at 12. So it was like, that was, you know, first when recovery was starting to like this new tech, the new mm-hmm. stuff was coming out. Like we had tubs and that was basically it. Right. Then it got to the point where we had like, like sleep pods where the pirates were like, not, <laughs> not like as in like you sat in like salt water and then it covered you. And that was like, it was like you're like in a spaceship pod. Right. And you just laid there. Like stuff like that. Yeah. Like that's where it got to. Like, <laughs> and you're like, okay, well, I went from little just like, science, yeah, yeah, fi- yeah. sci-fi. Not you quite just science. you literally just float on the salt water and like and just sit there, and that was somehow like you recover like in a black pod. And, like <laughs> I went from hot tubs to spaceships. Like <laughs> like it was nuts. It cost fifty thousand dollars. I really watched them. We had, like three of them. And like it was that was the craziest part about getting drafted when I did was like I sort of got to see the evolution of like recovery in baseball where it was right. like all right just hot tub cold tubs you know some like cool little like you know obviously stem and stuff like right. the normal standard issue stuff they've had since you know whenever mm-hmm. to like literally like space pods and with salt water and you're floating on it like yeah. that was literally like where it got to and, and you wake up and it's like 30 25 yeah, right that's, that's, what, like, that's, that's what you kept every time they shut that thing you're like man i might not wake up from this. Yeah. It's like but, idiocracy you know when you get stuck and they open up it's like the future was, so that was the craziest part was we'd be able to see the difference like again like I think recovery is a really mental thing. I think yeah. it helps like mentally. Like if you think it works, it's gonna work. Yeah. Like no matter what you're doing recovery wise. Mm-hmm. Like do I think I feel better after getting a massage? Yeah. So I like getting massages. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> I, like no matter if it was a terrible massage or not, I get up and I'm like, yeah, I feel better. Yeah. Like, that was, I, def- that was, I definitely that was feel more relaxed. I like my body's <laughs> less sore for sure. I'm definitely gonna play better tomorrow. Yeah. And it's like it could have just not done anything, but. Mm-hmm. Like to me, that's what works. So it's like mentally, I'm like, yeah, massage, cool. Like yeah. that works. I'm gonna play better tomorrow. Some people, it's like the, it's the, you know, the hypertext, the, the, mm-hmm. the, 
whatever, using Theraguns all day, right. like, or whatever, stims, like, you know, game readies, whatever it is. Yeah. But like, if it, if you think it's going to work, it's going to work. Like whether, cause just mentally <laughs> your body's going to, your, your brain's going to tell your body like, Hey, I feel better. Yeah. I think a lot of those modalities, they're, they're great, man. When you talk about compression Theragun, mm -hmm. I mean, at the saltwater pod, the space time, just, yeah. the space time <laughs> uh, travel pod. Yeah. But you know, I, they, you know, from as a trainer, as a therapist, the only what we know, what science tells us, you know, mm -hmm. those are great tools, but you got to use those in, in combination. Mm -hmm. It has to be in combination with a really good mobility, you know, really yeah. like a good yeah. dynamic yeah. mobility mm -hmm. program. Even the mobility programs alone are awesome, man. But it's having the discipline again mm -hmm. to make sure that the kids are yeah. doing that, you know, doing the stretches at home, like this 10 year old yeah. we talked about, right? Yeah. That that discipline he has, you know, to get up, make sure that we're doing those stretches daily you know, yeah. running through, and then those modalities do help. They're not the cure-all, man. Like, yeah. You know, they're not like you put it on, oh, I'm Superman, you yeah. know, like, oh, yeah. here I go. <laughs> no, of course not. Yeah. But they do help in certain situations. And I mean, as long as they're indicated, right? When there's an indication for it, someone will say something, oh, I feel ABC123. And it's those keywords that we look for, like, okay, is this a neuro thing? Or is this like a muscular skeletal thing, right? And depending on how they describe the pain, depending on how they feel about it, then we can, you, okay, this indicates more here, or it's actually contraindicated. This would be a horrible modality. This could make this person worse, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like yeah. finding that right combination and listening to those keywords yeah. when people are describing pain or discomfort or, you know, sure. and that's mm -hmm. kind of what, so that's, that's why I say like those modalities are great. You nailed it, man. It's like, oh, <laughs> I'm just great, but no, you gotta have, you yeah. know, the, the, the strength training and the mobility yeah, kind of together. So awesome, man. So I know right now, um, uh, Bandito's Baseball, what we can find on Facebook and Instagram. Yep. Yep. What's that handle? What would that? Um... Uh, so on, uh, are you, I don't even know who's running the Facebook. <laughs> okay. I, my, I, run, I mean, I'm in charge of Instagram. So it's okay. just South Tide, it's yeah. STX Bandito's okay. on, uh, on Instagram. Yeah, we're trying to like, you know, build that up. My social media is terrible. Like, I, my Instagram, my personal yeah. Instagram, I mean, it's food. Like, it's, it's, uh, I've, no, I don't even post. That's the problem. Like I post, I've post, I've had that Instagram yeah. for like seven years now and I've posted yeah. 18 times. In seven there you go. Years. Like it's once a, once a year thing almost like my daughter being born. That's about the only thing important enough to yeah. make my Instagram. Uh -huh. So, um, I'm going to be better though. That's like, I, I told Chris, like, Hey, I'm going to be better with the team one. Like, like I'm going to like, we're going to go to these tournaments. I'm yeah. going to take pictures. Like, yeah. like I'm going to like, post videos, post stories. Like I've already been, I've already, I've already posted 13 times on the, the South Texas Banditos one. Yeah. And that's in like a month. I'm, I'm 18 and seven that's years. That's awesome. Man. So like I've already like way But dude, isn't it hard? Isn't it hard it's, to get out of the moment, right? Like, oh, let me just get this out. Like yeah, when you're in the moment, right? Yeah. And you're, you're coaching. It's, right? just, isn't that it's tough? just weird. Like for my personal one, it was like, I just didn't think people cared. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't post. Like, yeah. it's like, I don't like think like, cause deep down when people post stuff, like I don't care. Right. So it's like, if us, it's like one of my, you know, what if someone close, it's like, cool, that's cool. But if it's something I think is irrelevant, I'm like, bro, I don't know why you posted that. Like, that's just stupid. <laughs> so I saw, I thought everybody thought of anything I posted. So right. that's why I only posted like very specific like big, big right, things big that things. people should care about either way. <laughs> but now with the kids, it's like, I'm just gonna post nonstop. Yeah. Like, that's just what, that's what type of age we're in now. Yeah. It's like the more like you just post, 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 yeah. like the more traffic you get, the more times yeah. you get to put on the yeah. Insta, like search page and then that yeah. pops up. And you never know like with where we're at and with like social media and like travel baseball, it's like scouts, I'm, Someone look at yeah. like Dude, Instagrams. I, like yes. they look yeah. at Instagrams. Like Instagram, you tag Twitter. like you tag yeah. certain colleges, and it's like all it takes is one like. Yes, sir. You know, I post a kid's hit tracks numbers from you know here at the academy, in some school in you know North Dakota, like sees it on the Insta story, and they're like, holy crap, that guy's got this exit velocity yep. on this like yeah. you know launch. It's like we might want to take a look at that yeah. kid. And all of a sudden, like something that your kid wouldn't have ever got seen in the Valley from North Dakota is now going to college yeah. like at D ones or something like, yeah. so it's like, that's why yeah. I'm the, it's a more of a bigger deal for me now to yeah. post a bunch. So I don't yeah. know what the Facebook yeah, and is. We, and we, we do, we do a lot of Twitter, okay. we do a lot of Twitter, you know, uh, so that's where we would post all our okay. all our kids stuff on Twitter, uh, on the LB 21 Twitter, uh, site. Okay. So, uh, that's where we post, you know, we post all our kids, you know, and, and yeah. we get a lot of traffic from coaches there and 
people, you know, coaches message, hey, what's what's going on with this kid? Or, right. you know, we like the way this kid looks and he passes their number. So we did a lot of Twitter, but okay. yeah, we're definitely going to get uh, better on the Instagram side. <laughs> uh, in the Facebook right now, like I said, we're just basically, you know, just been using mine. You know, right. I've been posting. Yeah, I've seen a lot of personal, it, man. It's really good yeah, stuff. Yeah. My, mm-hmm. my personal stuff. So uh, that's the stuff that right now we're, we're getting, you know, Wyatt's wife's uh, helping us a lot, uh, mm-hmm. Caitlin. So she's, you know, taking over that side of the emails mm-hmm. and, you know, just getting everything, you know, more organized because, like I said, I'm, you know, working and yeah. tournaments and yeah. we're all over the place. And, you know, Wyatt just got back from playing ball, you know, so mm. she's she's definitely helping us. But we're it looks like we're getting, you know, we're getting uh, all, a lot of Valley guys to come out. Yeah. You know, we've been, I think over 40 Valley uh, high school kids came out, you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, for, you know, tryouts and practice yeah. already. So. We're getting going, you know, every day, you know, every day. Like now, I just saw one on my phone, you know, <laughs> people are, are, are texting and, mm-hmm. and emailing, you know, they want information, want to come come play. But, yeah, no, we're we're looking to, you know, help help as many kids we can and uh, taking kids uh, every day. Uh, but like I said, and going back to the point to when we're talking about the, you know, playing or our, 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 uh, our training, our biggest thing in the fall is camps. You know, we – we go, we take our guys to Texas State camp. Um, we take them to UTSA camp. We do an UTRGV camp, Rice. Nice. We do uh, Corpus Christi, uh, Kingsville. So that's what we try to do a lot in the in the fall, uh, putting them out there in front of coaches. You know, nice. these are individual camps with just their coaches and our players. Sometimes it's two, two other teams and our team. Wow, nice. And uh, so, you know, our kids get to get seen right there by those coaches. So we do a lot more of that. <laughs> in the fall so like going back to the point to where you know are we just playing in the fall every weekend we're not we're yeah. training we're 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 practicing we're getting them to camps but we do have tournaments you know right. so the biggest tournaments and for travel bar are in october in uh, late september or early october mm-hmm. you got your jupiters for the seniors the underclass for the juniors mm-hmm. and the sophomore and the freshman event right those are all in florida during during September and October, right. which kind of sometimes we're like, well, we got school. Right, but those Bro, are the biggest. Th- those, are the, <laughs> those are the biggest. <laughs> those are the biggest events. Right, and lots of people in South Texas, Corpus to the Valley, they don't they don't even know. Right, they I'm sure if they know. knew, yeah, they, they, they don't even know yeah. that that's where you're supposed to be. Yeah. you know, like that's where you know. Yes, the summer's fine. They're great tournaments, everything. But if you have ever gone to Florida for Jupiter or the underclass event. And you walk around at those tournaments, and they're all it's played everything. at professional at, at, yeah. at the minor league facilities. Yeah. And I mean, you see every school in the country. Wow. I mean, you walk by and you see Clemson, you see Virginia, you see UT. Every wow. coach has their logo yeah. on their shirt, and you're just like, you got to be kidding me. And then yeah. you go play in Jupiter when you're with the best seniors in the country, guys who are playing because they're getting drafted. Now you see all wow. the agents out there, every wow. MLB team. Every, like I said, every college team watching their yep. guy that's going to their school mm-hmm. compete against the best so they know what they're getting. I mean, there's golf, car- there's thousands of golf carts parked at the fields watching the games. Wow, man. And like I said, our people from the Valley in South it. Texas don't even know that wow. in September, October, that's where you need to be. Man. If you want to go play at the next levels, that's what you have to strive to be at those events, right. you know? So, you know, I was fortunate enough to win. Chris played, you know, we, he was there, you know, yeah. that's why, you know, sometimes we didn't get to play football as right. much as we wanted because mm-hmm. we knew, hey, those are the best tournaments in the country. You right. have to be there. Every school is there. So yeah. that was another big thing that, you know, with bringing the Banditos now down here, we're able to help our kids get to those events yeah. and also educate people on knowing that our summer doesn't stop in in, yeah. in uh, July. Yeah. Like you got to train in August. Yeah, we don't play in August, but you're still training. You're still hitting everything hard, mm-hmm. practicing. September, same thing. We're training, hitting everything hard to get ready for those events. Nice, and, man. Uh, so those that those are something that people down here don't they don't know they don't yeah. know about them. And you, you know, lots of times you you're not taking just the one little team from the valley or Corpus there. You, you really you got to be a part of an organization to go those because right. the organizations are the ones that are going to those events. And right, the ones get invited. Yeah, and stuff. Jupiter, yeah. you have to be invited. You have mm-hmm. to be with a program that's invited. Right, you know, and that's another thing with going Banditos. We knew we needed to get our kids that opportunity to be in Jupiter. Right, just like Wyatt got to play in Jupiter, Chris got to play in Jupiter, right. Aaron got to play in Jupiter. Right. you know, Victor Loa got to play in Jupiter. Yeah, but like I said, they were with these organizations that can get into that. They gave them the opportunity, right, the opportunity. right out here. Yep. So. Dude, that's so awesome, man. You know, I 
I want to end with a couple things, and I want to say, man, I think uh, the Bandito organization is a great organization. I think they're in great hands with you guys, man. You guys, I mean, Chris and Wyatt, man, you guys, I think are the perfect people down here set up to really hold the standard, I think, right? The standard mm -hmm. that is the Bandito's baseball, right? Just through your personal experiences, professional experiences. And I absolutely wish you guys the absolute best. And I think you guys are right on, dude. And if I can help in any way, any form, man, you let me know, reach out. I would love to get in there, help you out with the kids, some strength, and mobility, whatever we can awesome. do to work together. Yeah. Um, I love it, but man, you guys, I think you're gonna have great success on here in really good hands. And I mean, kudos, man. Congratulations, uh, both of you guys. You're really, really great, us. man. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. I do want to say too, also, man, just really quick with Chris. So I just want to say, man, you know, uh, you've done such a great job with your son, man. He's yeah. such a respectable young man. <laughs> Known him for a long time yeah. for, as, a, as a kid, yeah. and he's so respectable. Uh, good job, man. Thank good you. job, Dad. All right, yeah, so you're, man, you're a good coach, you're a good trainer, man. You're a great dad, Thank Chris. All right, really great job, man. Thank so, you. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming on, guys, and man, I, I appreciate good it, man. Job. Good luck, brother. Good job, All right, man. Thank you.